So do you own a GoPro and feel like your footage looks bad? Or do you feel like your footage could at least look better than what you're currently getting? If that's you, then today's video is for you. In this video today, I'm going to talk about several different settings and tips that you can apply to your GoPro action camera in order to get the very best footage possible. Now for the discussion today, I'm going to be using a GoPro Hero 11. And some of these settings are specific to the Hero 11, but in general, most of these settings and tips will apply across any GoPro camera. So first thing you wanna check on your GoPro camera is are you running the latest firmware version for that camera? There are a couple different ways to check that. The first thing you can do is you can connect your GoPro to the Quick App on your iPhone or Android device. And if there is a newer firmware version, the app will tell you that, and it will download that firmware update for you to then apply to your camera. Second method you can use is you can go to the GoPro website and you can check their software update page and then click on the model of your camera. And there it will show you the latest firmware version. And then on your camera, you can go down to the general menu and about and compare the firmware version on your GoPro to the version on the website. Those should match. If they don't match, then chances are there's a newer firmware version that you'll want to download and install. Second thing to check is do you have the correct micro SD card for your GoPro? GoPro has a very select list of micro SD cards that they recommend using with GoPro cameras that is listed on the GoPro website. And in general, if you're using a SanDisk Extreme micro SD card, it's going to work just fine for you without any problems. If you have the wrong micro SD card, it can cause all kinds of problems with your GoPro. The card won't be able to keep up with the read and write speeds, and that could result in really bad looking footage. It can also result in overheating. So when you do buy the micro SD card, make sure you get it from a legitimate retailer because there are cases out there where fake micro SD cards are being sold under that SanDisk brand and they often don't have the correct read and write speeds as promised. So make sure to get them from a major retailer so that you can ensure you're getting the proper micro SD card. So if your footage is looking bad, it's also worth checking your lens cover. Make sure your lens cover is connected fully and that it's not scratched or dirty. If it's dirty, wipe it off with a microfiber cloth that won't cause scratches. And if it is damaged, get a new one from GoPro. On most models, it is replaceable. There are a few where it's not, but if you own the Hero 9, 10, or 11, the newest GoPros, all you have to do is pop this off, pop on the new one, it's about $20, and you're good to go. The next thing to check is, do you have the bitrate set to high? Now, depending on the model of GoPro you have, the setting is gonna be in a different place but on the GoPro Hero 11, the setting is right under the video menu option, and you want to make sure it's set to high and not standard. If it's set to standard, you're not going to get the highest quality footage from this camera, and it's gonna to tend to look blocky and not really detailed, but when you have it set to high, you're going to get the very highest quality footage from the camera, and it should help it look much better than if you had it set to standard. And if you're not seeing the high option available on the Hero 11, then you need to go to the general menu and make sure performance is set to high. Another setting that plays a big role in how your footage looks is your ISO min and max settings. For the ISO minimum, I recommend always having that set at 100 unless there's a special use case where you want to have the min higher for a specific reason. But in general, for most video filming, it should be set at 100. And for the ISO max, I recommend setting that up to 800 but I don't recommend going over 800 because the footage is going to start to have a lot of grain and noise if you're in a type of situation where the ISO max gets above 800. So I recommend setting it to 800 max so that it does not go any higher. Speaking of daylight filming, when you're filming with your GoPro, a big factor in what your footage looks like is how you're filming relative to the sun. So in general, a good filming practice with the GoPro is to have the sun at your back. That way, whatever you were filming is going to be well lit by the sun and you're not going to be filming into the sun. When you film into the sun, the exposure is going to adjust and it's going to make a lot of what you're filming look really dark and it's not gonna look great. So it's the best idea to have the sun directly behind you or at a 45 degree angle behind you. If you have to face the sun, you can mess around with the exposure lock setting, which will allow you to lock the exposure to a certain part of your frame and that can help but the very best footage is going to be if you have the sun behind you. So I recommend setting up your filming situations in general so that the sun is behind you and not in front of you. When you're facing the sun, the footage will not look as good. And on the topic of sunlight and lighting, white balance. White balance is a critical setting as well. If you don't know what to set your white balance at, 
selecting auto is generally going to work well. In general, if you're outside filming in daylight, you want to have that white balance set to either 5000K or 5500K. If you do 5500K, your footage will be a little bit warmer. It'll have a little bit more of the yellows and oranges. And if you do 5000K, it's going to have a little bit more of the blue tones. Either one is acceptable, but if you don't know what to set your white balance at, set it to auto, and in most cases, you'll be good to go. Next thing to discuss is sharpness. Do you feel like your footage looks too sharp? If so, you want to make sure your sharpness is set to either low or medium at highest. Now, I personally prefer setting it to low. I feel like low sharpness on the GoPro is best. And later on, if I want to bump up the sharpness a little when I'm editing, that's great. But usually I like to keep it on low. I find that low looks best. If you do want a little more sharpness and you don't want to edit later on, then you can set it to medium and it's still going to look pretty good. But if you're in a setting like a forest like this, or there's a lot of leaves and trees, I find that sharpness of low still looks best because at medium, the camera's trying to sharpen all of those little details and it can look kind of bad when it does that. Next, for the color settings, how you set the color can affect how your footage looks. In general, I don't recommend setting it to the vibrant. That's that really saturated look. And in a lot of filming situations, it can sometimes look bad, depending on what's in your frame. So on the newer GoPros, there's a third option called natural, which is great. Natural is pretty much middle of the road. It pretty much captures colors exactly how they look, which I love. But if you want to grade that footage later on, then do flat. Flat will give you a much higher dynamic range to work with, and it's going to give you the very best colors from this camera. You, of course, can selectively add back saturation, and you can adjust a lot of other things with flat. So if you want to edit, use flat. You're going to get really good looking footage. If you don't want to edit later on, use natural. So if your footage looks bad because of the highlights being blown out, change your EV comp. Instead of the default of zero, set it to negative 0.5. And in general, that negative 0.5 is going to preserve a lot of those details in the highlights. This will be especially true of any clouds in the sky or anything like that that could tend to get overblown really easily. It's gonna look a lot better if you do the negative 0.5. Then later on, if you're editing it and you feel like you need to bump up the exposure a little bit, you can easily do that and you're still gonna have great looking footage. So the GoPro is an action camera and action cameras tend to have that wide angle lens that can create a lot of fisheye. If you don't like the fisheye appearance in your video, change your lens to linear or narrow and the fisheye will be gone. I generally recommend linear because linear is the lens that allows you to have the widest angle possible without fisheye. And usually the point of an action camera is to capture as much of what's going on around you as possible. If fisheye is not a problem, then you can do wide super view and hyper view on the Hero 11 and you can get a super wide angle view but the wider you go, the more distortion there's gonna be. So if you're doing that wide angle, but you want to avoid as much fisheye as possible with a human subject, position that subject as close to the center of your frame as possible. And that is where you'll have the least distortion right there in the center. But the further out your subject gets on either side of your frame, the more distortion and fisheye there's going to be. So to eliminate any fisheye, use linear or narrow. If you're having trouble with the subject you're filming being in focus, you want to make sure you have your GoPro at least 12 inches back from that subject. 12 inches is the minimum focal distance on the GoPro. I typically recommend though, having it back at least two feet. So if you're talking to the camera, I recommend having it on a selfie stick at least two feet away from your face when possible. If you can't do two feet, at least 18 inches is great as well. And if you're filming another subject, say an animal, a plant, something like that, make sure to have this at least two feet away. It's going to look a lot better when you do that. Now, if you are filming in low light situations, first of all, keep in mind, this is an action camera with a pretty tiny little sensor. This camera is simply not going to excel in low light filming situations. However, there are some settings you can tweak on here to get much better results in low light. First thing you have to do is you have to turn off hyper smooth. If hyper smooth is left on, that electronic image stabilization is generally going to create a lot of jitter in your frames and the footage is going to look terrible. And that's because hyper smooth, which is a form of electronic image stabilization, it needs a higher shutter speed with nice, crisp, sharp frames in order to get to that highest quality stabilization. It needs those in order to stabilize properly. But when you're filming in low light, the shutter, if it's set to auto, is gonna to tend to lower that shutter speed 
because it needs to let as much light into the camera as possible. So my recommendation to address this is to put the camera in 24 frames per second and then set the shutter speed manually to one over 48. And then at that point, you need to make a decision. You either need to use a gimbal to stabilize this, or you can put your footage into real study later on to stabilize it in post. Great thing about the Hero 11 is it does have that gyro data built into it. So you can easily take that data and stabilize later on if you didn't have a gimbal or don't want to use one. Do know if you do use real study, you do have to pay $99 one-time fee for that. And that's an optional add-on to the GoPro player software. If you don't want to use real study, there are some other free or lower cost softwares out there that can take that gyro data and stabilize it as well. But I've used real study and it works great. And to me, it's been worth the $99. But low light is tricky and it is really important to change those settings. Otherwise your low light footage is not going to be usable most likely and it's gonna look really bad. And speaking of shutter speed, in general, it's a good idea to have shutter set to auto unless you have a special filming situation like the low light or if you're using ND filters. If you wanna learn more about ND filters, I've linked to a video above where I extensively explain how to use them on a GoPro and get the best results. But if you're not in low light and you're not using ND filters, it's going to be a good idea to generally leave the shutter speed set to auto to get the best results. Now let's talk about post. Let's talk about what to do with this footage after you've captured it to ensure you get the best results. First thing you wanna do is if you're on Windows and you're having trouble seeing the footage, that's because this is using the HEVC codec in the newer GoPros. And in order to view that on Windows, you do have to install an HEVC codec from the Windows store. It only costs 99 cents and it's a one-time download, but you do have to get that. Otherwise you won't be able to view your Hero 11 and a lot of the newer GoPro footage on Windows. It'll either say it can't play the file or it'll skip or it'll be completely black, but you'll hear the audio. If you have any of those situations occurring, chances are you need the HEVC codec from the Windows store. If you already have that codec and the situations are still occurring with the footage, then it could be that your device simply cannot play that HEVC footage. It could be old or have low spec hardware on it. If that's the case, then unfortunately there's not really a way around that. You would have to upgrade your device, but in general, that codec is the solution to that problem. And finally, let's talk about the export settings for this footage. So when you've captured your footage in 4K or 5.3K on the newer GoPros, when you go to export that footage, you wanna make sure you set the proper bit rate. Now, if you're exporting footage up to 4K 30 frames per second, I recommend setting the bit rate to right around 56 megabits per second. And that is based on the YouTube recommendation for videos that you're uploading in 4K. That's going to help ensure the results that you share on YouTube have the proper bit rate and still look good. If you're exporting a 4K video in 60 frames per second or higher, then you wanna make sure the bit rate is set to about 85 megabits per second. That's going to help ensure the quality of that video looks good on YouTube. Now, if you're exporting in 1080p, you don't have to have the bit rate as high, but generally I recommend to have the bit rate set to about 25 megabits per second, whether it's 30 or 60 frames per second in order to ensure best results. So if you do feel like the footage from your GoPro looks bad, or you feel like it should look better than what you're getting, I definitely encourage you to apply these tips and see how much your GoPro footage improves. And of course, if you're still getting really bad footage from your GoPro, even after applying these tips, I recommend doing a full reset of the camera to see if that fixes it. Now do note when you do a reset, it is going to wipe this back to the factory settings. You will have to plug in your best settings again, but that's a great last step to try. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.